When you have a problem such as dyslexia or dysgraphia, very quickly the problem stops being educational and becomes personal. Uh, you turn against yourself, you get angry at yourself, you're frustrated, you think you're stupid, you lose confidence, uh, you think you can't do X, Y, and Z. Uh, there's a lot of anger in your life, there's a lot of frustration because you try and you try and uh, you're, d you're not succeeding. And if there are people who are not sympathetic about that, uh, you're always being told you're not doing things very well. Uh, in my case, constantly being told I'm careless, I'm not paying attention, I'm not working hard enough, and all of that stuff. And you try. And you just, there's a level even of embarrassment because you keep making mistakes or you're a terrible speller. And in my case, I had a twin sister who was very bright and an older brother who thought he was a genius, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, it was frustrating to me. So what do I do? I try to uh, share with uh, young people my understanding of these frustrations and try to suggest, not just to kids but to the teachers, uh, that we all have aspects of our lives that are off-kilter, uh, different, and you just learn to accept these things. Now, that, that's easier said than done. But uh, it's an aspect of trying to come to grips with what you have and developing uh, compensatory uh, skills. Uh, kids who are dyslexic, kids who are dysgraphic, for example, are great listeners. Uh, when I take a book, a new book, to a class, I'd much rather go to a class of uh, kids who are struggling with reading because they listen so much better than those kids who don't have these problems. And they're sharper, they remember things, and they have that capacity, which some kids who are uh, more accomplished in these areas do not have. So when I was living in Denver, there was a school for kids who had reading problems. And that's where I would go to read my new books when I was working on them. Because they listened. I mean, they were squirmy because they ADAD and so forth, ADHD and, and that, but they were so sharp and they listened so well. And even their restlessness was helpful to me because when I would read a passage or a section, and they started to squirm, then I could say, this section of the book is not as tight as it should be. And I'd mark on the, I'd always work with a pencil in my hand, I'd mark on the side. And so they were great teachers to me as to what was going on in my own books. So, you know, in my own case, uh, it took me a long time to figure out what it was that I had. Just, I didn't know this as a kid. And um, it reduced the level of my stress, of anger. Uh, and made me say, okay, that's who I am. That's the way it's going to be.